Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for attending today's webcast, Best Practices in Partner Recruitment and Onboarding. I do see most of the attendees have been able to join, so we're going to start right away. Uh, first of all, my name is Stacey DeRosier, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Channeltivity, and I'm going to be your host today. Just a few housekeeping notes before we begin today's presentation. The webcast is being broadcasted and will be recorded and will be sent to everyone who uh, registered within the next few days. In addition, we are broadcasting the webcast in listen-only mode. Uh, this will help keep some of that background noise to hopefully a minimum. And we do encourage you to submit any questions via our chat screen, and we will answer those questions during our Q&A session following today's presentation. And as a note, we, were, we are gonna try to keep this to about a half hour today uh, to hopefully give you some time back in your day. So again, welcome to today's webcast. For those of you that may not be aware of who Channeltivity is, uh, we are the market leader in partner relationship management for technology vendors around the globe. As a SaaS-based application, Channeltivity is fast to deploy, requires no IT staff, and easily configures to meet the specific channel program requirements and workflows that drive channel success. During today's webcast, we will focus on two forms of partner recruitment, passive and proactive, and what to consider when choosing your strategy. Next, we will discuss partner onboarding, specifically three components of onboarding, including the welcome, the process of planning your go-to-market strategy, and most importantly, how to enable your partners. Finally, we'll take a look at why reviewing your partner program and its recruitment and onboarding strategy is essential so you can continue to, to, see, the, to see the success with your channel. Before we dive into our really primary discussion, I want to speak briefly about managing your channel. There are three key things you need to remember when managing your channel, and most importantly, these three things need to work together to maximize your program success. Number one, process. It is essential that you have defined the components and the rules of your program. This includes the partner recruitment and onboarding activities, as well as deal registration, marketing activities, and everything in between. Number two, systems. We need to make sure you have the systems in place to support those processes. Without the proper systems to manage who your partners are and their activities, you cannot truly carry out the processes you've defined for the program. And finally, make sure you have the right people in place to manage the channel, to create the relationships both internally and externally to make sure both you and your partners are successful. And I'll be referring back to these three key points throughout today's presentation. Before we look at partner recruitment, I want to note how important your partner program is. It is really what will describe your value proposition to your prospective partners, as well as what will differentiate yourselves from your competition. Uh, a properly constructed program will really show how you will help your partners create demand for your solution, how you will work to avoid and potentially resolve that conflict should it occur, and how you will enable your partners towards success, and of course, how easy it is going to be to do business with you. And whether you're the market leader or not, if you are easy to do business with and have a partner, excuse me, a proper partner program in place, your partners will sell you over your competition. So again, two key things to remember here. If you have a great partner recruitment campaign, but the wrong partner program, you will potentially fail. And if you have a great program, but a poor recruitment campaign, you will also fail. So both your program and your recruitment and onboarding stra strategies and processes need to be well-defined and support your overall channel initiatives. So let's look at recruitment. There are really two key ways to go about this. Either you're going to go passive or proactive. For passive recruitment, this allows organizations such as yourself to be able to wait for partners to come to you. While most organizations do recruit this way, 95% uh, is, is one of the numbers that is out there from a survey perspective, it truly is not ideal to do. Yes, it is easy, but um, you get a very marginal return on the investment, and it rarely drives the results that you require in the long run. Now, while it can be a portion 
of your partner strategy or your recruitment strategy. It is not to be your actual full recruitment strategy. And so we're going to talk a little bit now about proactive recruitment. So this strategy, while a little bit more difficult to really execute on, delivers the best results as it puts you in control of your destiny. So for proactive partner recruitment, you really need to consider the following. What is your ideal partner profile? Where do you need to recruit your partners? And what is the process that you're going to involve to actually go through that recruitment process? So let's go through each of these in a little bit more detail. First off, to start identifying what your true partner profile is, you must first ask yourself, what is important to you in a partner? And what have you seen success with? Once you've thought about these two questions, you can better understand how to go about writing down the specific partner profile characteristics that will bring you the best and most qualified prospects. For instance, look at the uh, profile characteristics that are on the screen at this point. Number one, target market, customer type. As an organization, you should have a pretty good handle on what type of customer will most likely buy your solution, as well as the market segment that you're really targeting. Finding a partner that also focuses on these and has had success in that in these markets will could be a very strong partner for you. Competing in complementary technologies. If you have a solution that requires maybe another solution to be sold alongside of it, or at least to be present in potentially the infrastructure, looking for partners that sell that complementary solution is a great way of going. Those partners already have a list of your potential customers. Now on the flip side, if you're looking to gain market share, targeting partners that represent competing solutions is really also a possible option. The challenge here is finding those partners that want to work with you, not just turn your information over to your competitor. Um, as an example, one of my previous companies, this was actually one of the primary ways we targeted our partner prospects. Really, our main competitor was a very large vendor that really did not value their partners as much as they may have done in the past. And this was our leverage for us to go in, offer our competing solution to partners that just needed a similar solution, but more importantly, wanted to work with a vendor that actually valued the partnership and the relationship. Geographic coverage. Um, we're going to discuss this in a few more minutes in, in a little bit more depth, but I want to make sure that you keep this in mind as, as it is really a valuable part of your profile. Understanding where you need the coverage will help also guide your recruitment efforts. The business model. Really understanding how the partner is organized, how they do, how they actually go to market will tell you if they are in a growth mode or not. Um, if they have the type of business model that is appropriately situated for your solution, as well as do they have the technology expertise to actually support your solution in the field. So understanding all of this and many other con uh, components of their business model will show you if they can actually be successful bringing on new technologies such as yours or not. And then existing customers. A partner that has a list of existing customers that, your, that are your target customers is a key part of the profile. When a partner brings your solution on board, they will naturally first start with talking to their existing customers about you. There is no better way to start a relationship than with a partner that can actually quickly see success from their initial sales efforts. It also will give them the confidence to move beyond their existing customers and grow their revenue potential and really yours. So once you have developed what your key characteristics are, once you've listed that out, what you want in a partner, now you need to determine what is important versus nice to have and keep score of each of these parts of the profile and keep them in your PRM system. This will really help you prioritize those partners that you are in the process of recruiting. And as I just mentioned, geography is also plays a complete, excuse me, a key component 
in your recruitment strategy. So when looking at this, you should be considering, you know, where are your existing leads coming from? Do you have adequate coverage to really manage these leads? Or do you need more help from people like partners to actually bring those leads to convert to opportunities? And as a note, having leads already available to provide to these new partners in these new geographies makes the whole recruitment that much easier. Also think about where are your existing customers, especially when you require local references, potentially having existing customers in target regions is a great way to raise the confidence of the new partner that demand is already present in their geography. And finally, what is the overall strategic direction for your organization? While you may have no partners, for, uh, for instance, in Australia, is it wise to start recruiting there just because you don't have any if the organization as a whole is not able to support that geography yet? So good things to consider from a geographic requirement. Now, finally, let's look at the recruitment process. This is also where you consider the systems you should have in place to support your recruitment efforts. A PRM system like Channeltivity should have the ability to support you as you walk through the following steps in the recruitment process. For instance, where will you record and track who your partner prospects are? I have seen it often done on spreadsheets. This causes so many different pro uh, problems where um, not everyone is clear as to who is, re who is rec excuse me, recruiting which partners because everyone is keeping a different spreadsheet. Um, also, who is going to be responsible for managing the recruitment process for each and every partner? How can you assign those effectively? Is your partner profile recorded somewhere so that each prospect can be evaluated against the same profile rather than individually by the partner manager? As you're going through the recruitment process and learning about each prospect, where will all of this information be recorded so that the information can be actually used during the onboarding process? During the recruitment process, you will find a lot about each of your partners. Keep that information in a place that can be used once they're actually signed. And how will you report your recruitment progress to management? Again, a lot of people will do this on spreadsheets. The challenge here is that it's a lot of different spreadsheets if you have a number of different partner managers. You have to keep it in one good, solid, single place so that overall recruitment can be viewed. And then once you have decided to actually bring on a partner, how will you easily manage the agreement process? Is it all going to be done uh, by hand-delivered uh, contracts, or is it something that you can automate as part of the uh, as part of the onboarding process? So let's go back to the three points I made at the beginning around process, systems, and people. First of all, from a process standpoint, with your recruitment strategy, it is really necessary to make sure you have identified your unique partner profile, that you have a strategy around your geographic requirements, and finally, a documented process that your entire organization can use to recruit, to recruit those partners. From a systems perspective, a PRM system that can support the processes you've laid out end-to-end -end is essential. And then finally, the people. Make sure your channel managers and others in your organization understand your strategy and are willing to support the process you've laid out. So now let's take a look at the onboarding process. It is essential to have this in place before those first agreements start coming in, really to ensure that you have the right level of support and the right experience for your new partners. In the onboarding process, there are really three key things to look at. First of all, a welcome. How is this going to be accomplished and what information must be conveyed during this initial step? A business plan of some sort, a simple plan that lays out the rules of engagement and initial expectations and enablement procedures so everyone is kept on the same page. And finally, how will you enable your partners to get them moving quickly and seeing that success? Let's take a look at the partner welcome. The partner welcome really can take on many different forms, but regardless of how you handle this, it should be should comprise really of the following elements. Um, introductions to your team, including your executives. Make sure they have full access to the right people in your organization early so that they can feel part of your team 
and know who they can go to when questions arise. Next, have some level of access to the first onboarding or training steps you want them to take. Things like an overview video, a welcome, um, a, maybe a tour of the partner portal, all things to give them quick and easy access so that they can understand where they need to go to take their next steps. And of course, access to that partner portal. And, and really speaking of the portal, make sure you have the, the portal customized to meet the needs of the partner at that user level so that they can quickly understand what resources they have available to them and in general, how they can work with you. The overall portal experience is one of the, the most important ways to show how easy it is going to be to do business with you. So make sure it is a strong and good experience. And the thing really to remember here is you do not want to overwhelm them, your, your new partners, but rather keep them moving along a process that maintains the level of excitement they had during their recruitment process when they were understanding the value and the potential of working with your solution. It's also wise to make sure that this overall welcome step happens quickly, um, shortly after the agreement is signed, really within that one week time frame. So next, um, creating that business plan. Um, that initial plan should really kind of set up those rules of engagement. How are you going to go to market together? Um, who's going to take lead, et cetera. Initial plans for training so that they understand what level or what time and resources they need to set aside. The overall partner onboarding process, what that looks like from end to end. Initial marketing programs that they can quickly take advantage of. Maybe it's an email, maybe it's a quick out of the box webcast so that they can launch your solution quickly to their existing customer base and how to measure success in the first few months and quarters of the partnership so everyone understands where they stand and maybe where they need to improve on both sides. And really by having this um, plan in place, you will have an agreed upon plan that you can both work towards. And from a PRM perspective, um, having this plan live within the portal, so both of you and both you and your partners can really see it at any time. We'll make sure that that plan continues to be the living, breathing document that you really intended it to be. And then finally, enabling your partners. Training your partners on your solution is essential and one that really must be repeated over and over and over again. During the initial training, you should probably convey why your solution is unique to the market, who you target, what is your target customer, and how easily it is to position your solution to their prospects. Additional training and more specific, more specific information really can kind of come later. It is the most important thing to equip them enough to recognize an opportunity and then bring you in for some, you know, on the job training, if you will. So if your partners can actually do this, along with support from you, they should be able to begin to see success very quickly. And that's really essential. Seeing success out of the gate will endear that partner to you. In addition uh, to all the various online or in-person trainings that you may be doing, make sure they have access to some of those key resources available to them in the partner portal. Um, these should include things like brochures, data sheets, white papers, things they can actually send to their prospects to show them a little bit more about your solution. Um, simple messaging documents to help them understand how they can actually talk about you. Again, very simplistic, but enough to give them uh, an understanding of what to say. Some competitive information, specifically showing them how to handle issues in the field when really asked about how you compare to some of your main competitors. And then, of course, some level of a pricing document. Nothing is worse than having a partner get far down the path with a prospect and not being able to give them even a list price of your solution um, during that discussion. And then really, it is essential to continually give them ongoing content and ongoing training opportunities so that the partners can be further educated. Your PRM system should be able to tell you what your partners are utilizing, both from a training perspective as well as a resource perspective, so that you can make the future content um, deliverables and, and you can schedule those out on what's being used and what's not being used. 
So let's go back to the best practices in the case of the process systems and people. So from an onboarding perspective, make sure you understand the steps of the onboarding process. Be aware of how the partners are actually responding to those and be ready to take to make some of those adjustments as necessary. From a systems perspective, your PRM really should be able to support the onboarding activities, both in being able to customize the experience as well as report on the results. And then from a people perspective, of course, onboarding cannot be done in an automated fashion completely. There are parts that can be automated, but in general, your partner managers really must be involved for the process to work, to, to work effectively and to truly develop that relationship with that partner. So now that you have a recruitment and onboarding um, strategy in place, um, you really need to review the process at least a few times during the year. Really need to be considering how is the market changing? What are some new technologies that are out there? Maybe new competitors. Um, what are some of the new business models like cloud? How is that going to affect my customer, my partner's uh, business model? How is it affecting my business model as an organization? And then how is your overall organization changing? Looking really at what's going on and in and around your organization will allow you to compare your strategies and make sure that you still have the right strategies in place to recruit and onboard the right partners. And then consider the journey uh, you're asking your partners to go on. Is it a good one? Ask your partners what is working and what is not. Additionally, talk to the partners that maybe you did not even sign. They may be able to provide you some insight on some of the, that some of your existing partners really can't. And then finally, back up your findings with metrics driven by your PRM system to make sure you are making the right changes as you go through it. So in summary, really ensure that your recruitment and onboarding strategies support your overall organizational goals, involve all of the members of your organization to really help you determine how you are going to bring on partners and which partners are the right, are the right ones for the organization. Look at the partner interests. What do they need in order to really understand who you are to make that decision whether they'll partner with you or not? And how are they going to go through that onboarding process? Really take it from their view as well. And then how easy are you able to change your recruitment and onboarding strategies? You will be required to change these at some point. Make sure that the systems and the people and the processes that you have in place are available to be able to be changed to meet your ongoing requirements. And then of course, use your PRM to manage your strategy. Having things done within spreadsheets and emails and things like that really are not going to allow you to continue to uh, work your processes in a way that is understandable and can be um, addressed by the entire organization. And then finally, again, review and revise to meet the needs of your partners and of your organization. You never want your program or your strategies to go stale. You must be reviewing and revising them on an ongoing basis. So at this point, um, I want to turn it over to a few of your questions um, that have come in. Actually, there's a few that already came in uh, during today's webcast. Um, if you have any additional ones that you would like to pose to me to, uh, to answer here live, um, you can certainly write those either into the questions uh, into the Q&A section or in the chat section, and we will address those uh, at this time. Um, so there was a couple questions that have already come in. Um, as you are starting to recruit, how many partners should you be targeting to get the results that you want? Really kind of depends upon um, a number of different factors, but what um, a figure that I always try to use is about five times. Um, so if you're trying to target 10 new partners um, in the next quarter, I would target 50. And that really allows you to really go against your profile, understand how your uh, how these partner prospects are actually matching up against your profile. Um, you know, people may look great on paper. Or these organizations may look great on paper. You really have to talk to them, really interview them, really get into the nitty gritty of how they work and, and their targets and, and um, how they go to market so that you can better understand 
um, if they're the right partner for you or not. And really having a, a nice solid base of five times what you really want to rec um, recruit is a great way that you can really pick the, the kind of the cream of the crop, the, the best partners that are out there. Um, another question was, uh, let's see, have you worked with distribution for recruitment? And how does this require uh, how does this require you to change your strategy? Good question. Um, a lot of people are moving to distribution uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, and generally, one of those reasons is, you know, obviously they work with a number of different uh, partners out there, partner organizations, and uh, they can make those quick, um, uh, quick introductions for you very easily. Um, and that's great because then you can still go through your standard recruitment process if you're the one doing the recruitment. Now, where the change happens is if you're going to have um, distribution actually manage the recruitment process for you. Um, the challenge here is that um, you still want them to be recruiting the right partners for you. Again, going against a lot of the recruitment, the profiling, the, um, the just managing the overall process the same way you would, right? So you want to make sure that you are instructing your distribution team to really go against your standards that you are requiring of the program overall. And um, my, uh, I would also encourage you that, you know, if you're completely leaving it up to your distribution partners to actually manage the full recruitment process, to um, work with them on some um, have them shadow you, uh, have you go in and, and talk with some of the people that they are in the, in the process of recruiting. You want to make sure that the people that are out there representing you, your partners, uh, regardless of who brought them on, really do support your overall strategic objectives from a partner program. And you want to make sure that those are um, well attended to. Uh, so number, um, Here's another question. Um, what are key metrics you use to measure partners? So um, there's a lot of different ways you can actually measure partners. And there's the measurement of partners um, as they're part of your program. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Scorecarding, you can measure them against revenue. Per, um, revenue. You can measure them against uh, programs, a um, number of different things. When speaking specifically about recruitment, um, what I normally will do, and, and Channel Tivity does have this, um, this functionality uh, as well, is that if you look at all of the different components, the different things that you're trying to recruit a partner against, uh, like I mentioned, uh, like the target market and the geographic uh, requirements, um, existing customers, et cetera, lay all of those out and give them a specific score, right? And so as you're going through the uh, the recruitment process with your customer, with your uh, prospects, partner prospects, you can actually say, okay, yes, they meet this requirement, they meet this requirement, they meet this requirement. And so say you have maybe six um, need to have requirements, but if they're like, uh, you could say, you know, four out of six is a strong partner prospect, then you can look at all of the scoring that you do across your partners and look at those ones that scored high. Maybe You'll only talk to the partners or maybe only prioritize your time on ones that, you know, are four out of six or maybe five out of six. Um, not every partner is going to match your profile exactly. It would be great if they did, and those would be great partners to have on board. But you want to make sure that um, you also are, are, are having that human element, that human element of really understanding and talking with these partners. Are these partners that you can work with? Are they ones you can actually develop a relationship around? Um, but overall metrics, there's a lot of them. Um, and certainly I can, I can follow up with you directly if you have some more specific questions on that. But there's a lot of different metrics depending upon where you are in the partner program and really where you're trying to, to measure them at. Um, another question that came in is, I saw a map during the geography discussion. Is that from Channel Tivity or something else? Um, actually, that is from Channel Tivity. It's part of our partner module. It allows you to really overlay um, 
your existing partners, uh, target partners or prospective partners that you're bringing in through recruitment, um, and also some of the accounts you're working, et cetera. So you can overlay those on an actual map and visually see where you have gaps as far as from uh, geographic coverage. Um, let's see. Have you seen any specific enablement tools that have worked well for you? Um, I've, I've been in the channel for a long time, um, and there's been a number that I've liked to use. One of the key things that I've used from an enablement standpoint is really has been one of the first things that I've been able to give to a new partner when I'm, I'm training them, just meeting them, just trying to get, kind of get them on board. It's what I call a uh, partner battle card. And the partner battle card really consists of um, easy messaging, kind of your elevator pitch, um, some key uh, bullets that you want to make sure are utilized, some pain, uh, pain solution type uh, benefits uh, or statements, I should say, um, ways to quickly target who is a good prospect. Um, it includes um, some level of competitive information, not a lot, but enough so that they understand who competitors are uh, for your solution, maybe a few notes on it. Um, the, really, the design of the battle card is that it's really one sheet that they can have up in their office that they can um, carry with them in their, uh, you know, in their portfolio, or they can quickly pull up from the partner portal. But um, it gives them basic information, um, especially uh, great to be used for, you know, really as you're onboarding these new partners. Hopefully they'll be able to rattle all of this stuff off very quickly afterwards within maybe a month. Um, but also on the back of the card, I also have, you know, how to work with, with my company. I would have, um, you know, key contacts, uh, uh, quick pricing information, um, how to register deals, quick access to the partner portal, et cetera. So more of how to do business with my organization. So that is one enablement tool that I really enjoyed um, using. Um, and from a training perspective, um, make sure that you have an element of online training as well as um, in-person training. Um, in-person training is great. Uh, you can either do it before or after the online training is done. Um, but that in-person training kind of reiterates your messaging and, and, and the points that you want to bring out. But it also will help you um, go into kind of an account mapping um, discussion. So again, helping your partners understand who to quickly target um, so that they can see some early success with your solution. And then I think the final question um, that has come in, let me just check, uh, yep, uh, at this point, is with channel activity, can you manage the passive recruitment strategy? Um, as you mentioned, and basically do you have like a prospect form, um, that they can use? So yes, we do have a partner prospect form that you can configure. Um, it would be a link onto your, uh, corporate website. And when the partner prospect were to actually fill that information out, it actually gets uh, sent directly into channel activity into the recruitment module within the partner section and uh, you can manage the uh, partner recruitment uh, fully uh, within within the system so it is a great way um, if you don't have um, a, a a good way of doing that I know a lot of people will um, just use a form on their website that you know maybe goes into their CRM system or something like that really making sure that it goes that that the information regardless of the PRM system that you're using, really making sure that you have the partner information go into your PRM system. So again, you can manage the entire recruitment and onboarding, the whole signing process from within your PRM will really help you um, understand. It'll give you some metrics as to how many partners close, how many don't. It can help you um, measure against your profile, um, which partners are actually, uh, you know, signing the agreements, maybe which ones aren't that you thought would. So there's a lot of reasons to actually manage this entire process from within your PRM. And it, it's, uh, I can't stress that enough, um, but making sure that you first of all understand the process and, and why you want to be doing certain things is, is really kind of the most important part um, as you go through all of this and, and make your decisions on which types of strategies you're going to include um, as you go forward. So I 
think that was the last question that came in. Um, again, I, I want to thank everyone for attending today. I think we kept it to about a half hour. Um, so as a reminder, if you do have any additional questions, anything else comes up um, after today's presentation, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is available on the screen, and I'd be happy to assist you. Um, I hope that you are going to be able to join us for some future webcasts as we continue to discuss some of the new trends and some of the best practices um, as you manage, enable, and engage with your partners this year. So again, thank you all for attending, and I appreciate your time, and hopefully this, uh, this content was helpful as you go out and recruit and onboard some new partners. Thank you.